Many people pivot from all sorts of different industries into cybersecurity, and food and bev is absolutely no different. But with long hours, long shifts, and seasonal work, it can be a grind, but it doesn't mean you can't pivot into cybersecurity. Today, we are talking with Gary Sturgiatis, who has worked in food and bev and made his transition into the cybersecurity industry. It's an absolute success story. I'm super excited. We're going to be talking today about why he chose to switch. What was it that pushed him over the edge? Because you might be experiencing this too. We'll talk about the challenges he encountered while making that pivot and transition, the transferable skills that he picked up in Food and Bev that are directly applicable to information security today and the lessons learned that he wish he knew to start with so you can take advantage of that. It's going to be an awesome episode. Stay tuned. All right, here we are with Gary. Gary, thank you so much for being with us today. How are you? I'm doing fine. Thank you very much for having me. Absolutely. I really, really believe that there's going to be a lot of people who are going to get great value out of this conversation. So Gary, tell us, what'd you do in Food and Bev and what caused you to want to make this pivot into cybersecurity? Well, honestly, I got into Food and Bev basically bartending about uh, 10 or so years ago. It's just where my life took me and I enjoyed it, but I set a five-year limit for me, but I enjoyed the industry enough where it kept pulling me on and on and on. I mean, honestly, if COVID is very hard, backbreaking, and uh, it's it's it wears you out and so uh well i had a five-year plan to get out of the service industry i never made it out in five years and so after 10 i was finally able to make it out and uh when i was sitting around trying to figure out what am i going to do i was sitting at home i had a new uh, brand new newborn at the time and i needed to do something and so the local local college was offering some certification boot camps and i was like you know what why not i'm sitting at home i got a computer and i'll brush up on some of my skills and i'll be honest with you it was pretty intimidating because i've got a little bit of a technical background, but I hadn't really touched a computer in five to 10 years. And I was just kind of worried about, you know, all the technologies that had come out and just kind of left me in the dust. But I started taking these classes and realized that, no, this is very doable. And there's a lot of options, if not way more options than there were, options than there were uh, 10 years ago. So it, it, it ended up being a pretty, pretty easy transition for myself. Oh, that's fantastic. And it, it really is just shows you that there's nothing to fear, but fear itself. Just taking that first step, just dive in and seeing it and realizing there is a a lot of uh, opportunity and access to education and technology there. I love it. So as you were, ma you know, made the decision, you're taking the classes, the boot camps, what challenges did you encounter on your way into breaking in? Uh, first of all, it was dedication to the books. You know, I, I, even though I wasn't doing service industry, I was still doing service industry hours with the newborn. But finding time to fit it in and staying staying the course, you know, you know, getting back to those books when I was tired and uh, learning the technologies that would ultimately get me, get me in the door so I could learn even more technologies. I think that was the most difficult part was trying to stay dedicated to my path forward. Yeah, vigilance is definitely uh, key, not just in getting the job, but you'll find out once you get in the industry, vigilance is uh, super important too. What type of transferable skills? Someone watching this in Food and Bev thinking like, this sounds great, but you know, I'm going to start from zero. You had a little bit of technical background. What kind of transferable skills might people have already picked up working in the service industry? I'll tell you what, one skill that is uh, so so very important that I, I hear a lot of people mention, including yourself, but I don't think it gets as enough mention as it should, is communication. A large part of the job is communication. And, and without communication, uh, party A doesn't know what party B is really saying. And so when you're in the service industry, that's what you do is you talk to people from all different walks of life, whether they have technical backgrounds or if they're just, you know, in the sports or whatever, you, you communicate. And so, you know, being in the industry now, I've been working the job for about nine months now. I'm really glad that my communication skills were up because not only did it help me get my foot in the door, because when you knock an interview out of the park with your communication skills, then you can get into the job and learn even more stuff from your coworkers. So I would we got to rest on uh, communication skills. Yeah. And, you know, just to kind of follow up on that, I really feel like service industry people are particularly good at nonverbal cues, body language, temperament, these type of things, and understand how to maybe approach a person who might seem irate or approach a person who might seem upset or in a great mood. Mm -hmm. Does any of the nonverbal communication skills you've developed provide any value? Uh 
I, I can only speak to my specific position, and it certainly has. The interactions of the two different parties, you need to know what the other party's thinking, and sometimes you can sense that they're not happy about something. And so in, in that regard, you certainly can. So there certainly is a little bit of nonverbal in there. Another one I would like to mention real quick, though, because it just popped into my head, is dealing with high-stress situations. You know, you don't do it all the time, or I don't do it all the time in my position, but every now and then, you have those days or weeks where you're just go, 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 go. And in the middle of doing something, something breaks and then something else breaks and then you got people yelling at you, which is certainly something people in the service industry is, are familiar with, especially when you're understaffed, you're in the weeds, you got high demand customers. So being able to handle the stressful situations has certainly also helped in, in my position. That's an excellent point. I mean, especially when you're dealing with breaches, if you're thinking about maybe going into a SOC analyst role, which is like a blue team or a defender helping organizations defend, you will have those high stress stress moments because when an attacker, you know, compromises a system or a network or something, it's all hands on deck and it's adrenaline dump. So it's, that's an excellent point and one I, I hadn't thought of, but uh, I'm glad you shared it. So obviously you didn't go from like zero to hero instantly. I have to imagine there were a couple stumbling blocks, a couple impediments. What kind of lessons learned did you pick up along the way that you might share with someone who's like inspired by your conversation right now and, and wants to get into cyber from service? Well, one of the first pieces of advice I give to friends and family and people to run across is you got to do the boring stuff first, the fundamental stuff, you know, mm -hmm. learn how a network works, work, learn how systems work, learn how operating systems work, learn what a hard drive is, you know, you got to know that basic stuff before you can get to the fun stuff. Because a lot of people, in my experience, look at cybersecurity like hacking, you know, that fun, you know, the mm -hmm. red teaming, the penetration testing, and those are some fun tools to play with, but you can't go directly there. I mean, those tools ava are available for beginners and you can learn how to use them, but it's I would I would stress definitely the fundamentals and then uh, grow from there. Yeah, it's an excellent point because if you don't get the foundation, the house you're building on top is going to be unstable and, and, and fall apart <laughs> and just right, not not right. be a good not be a good situation. And I appreciate that you called it the boring stuff because you know getting back to what you said earlier about vigilance and, and hitting the books. Yeah, the boring stuff sometimes you just got to kind of grind through it and and maybe go through, back over it um, just to make sure that you have it so you can fully not just appreciate the work down the stream, but actually understand it because nothing's worse than than trying to learn something more advanced and not having the background. You're just kind of, you know, guessing and faking it as you go. Oh, absolutely. I, I look back to my beginnings and, you know, trying to mess around with the tools on Kali and stuff. Every now and then I'd be able to get them to function, but I wouldn't be able to just sit down and whip something up real quick. And I, I'm a lot more comfortable now, a year and a half later. Still not quite there yet. I'm still working on the fundamentals, but uh, yeah, I mean, you got to know what you doing so you can move forward absolutely and spoiler alert you'll never learn at all you know i've been in the industry a long time and i'm still learning myself so one of the the best pieces of advice that i got when i started um i used to i, I watched a lot of neil bridges he really gives great advice especially for getting into the industry and one of the things he does is that that thousand person linkedin challenge and getting your foot in the doors is, is not necessarily an easy thing to do in fact it can be a very hard thing to do but it's who you know and at what point you know them so the more contacts you have, the better chances you have getting in that door. In fact, my position came from one of my boot camp teachers. I paid attention in class, you know, always answering questions. And when somebody came to him, said, do you have any students that would like a job? He said, here, I got somebody for you. And that's what something you have in the service industry is you have connections with all kinds of people. Like, I bet you didn't know that person sitting at your table was an executive running, you know, a sock somewhere or something like that. In fact, after I got my job, when back to my old job and started talking to some of my old regulars and they're like I didn't know you're in the indus industry if you ever need a job just reach out to me <laughs> so it's it's it, it's a good thing to reach out to people talk to people make contacts make friends it's you know don't be intimidated by somebody that may know more than you or may not know more than you it's certainly a great piece of advice that I got absolutely social networking is one of the most sure. critical skills and and practices it's more than a skill to practice you have to do it to getting a job uh, in the industry no doubt any other uh, tidbits you want to drop? I think the last one is don't get, get discouraged either before or after you get the job. There's been several times my current situation or current position where it, it gets tough and you know walking out the door seems like an easy option but if you just hang in there the next day will be better you'll learn some more and you grow from it so just just keep just keep going up moving on and don't get discouraged. Love it. Thank you so much Gary. Such great sage advice man. You're spot on with all of it and, and really dealing with 
the, you know, the, the emotional part of it, right? Like the technical skills you can learn, but there is high stress situations. There is fatigue. There is burnout, all of these things. So being mindful of all of them uh, definitely will help you as a practitioner. So Gary, thank you so much for sharing your story. If you're looking to move from service to cyber, Gary is an inspirational case study. It can be done and it can be done quite successfully. Uh, really appreciate it. Be sure if you want to connect with me or Gary, you can jump over onto the Simply Cyber Discord server. We're both active over there. This is how we actually set up this conversation. A lot of great other people in there helping each other break into the industry. So be sure to go join that. I'll put a link in the description below. Thanks so much, everybody. And we'll see you next time.